Come to a seated posture. Bring the hands to the thighs, press in for a little grounding or turn the palms up to receive some vitality, energy, inspiration. Maybe close the eyes for just a moment, tuning in with the breath. Observing its natural state, how it corresponds with the thoughts in the mind, the length of the inhale and the exhale, In the next couple of breaths, let's start to bring some intention to our breathing, drawing out the inhale for some time and making sure to make a complete exhale. The belly pulls into the spine. Maybe you have your ocean breath, ujjayi breath. The sound of the ocean. Keep rooting through the hip bones, rising through the crown of the spine, sorry, the crown of the head, all the way up through the spine. And let the hands become gentle and reach the heart space, palms pressing together. Slight lift of the chin, keeping our throats open this practice. We need that vital breath now. And set an intention for this short yoga practice, which you can access as many times as you need if we don't do enough moving here for your needs. Remember that this intention sits in this place for when you become distracted. Let's open the eyes. We'll come right away to a downward facing dog. So if you've never done one at all, come to tabletop, push into the hands, which are under the shoulders tuck the toes, let's have bent knees, heavily bent knees first. Inhale and exhale with bent knees, lift the hips, pushing the hands into the earth. Send the hips as high as you can and then start to drop the heels, maybe one at a time, walking the dog first. Length and really, we're really savoring length and access in this, in this class. This isn't a full class, this is a sink in, to a few crucial poses, lengthening the spine. One heel drops, the other knee comes in, maybe even hold there. Feel what that's like to push into the right heel and away from the earth with that right hand, sending the hip back. Maybe even send it to the side, get a stretch in the side body. Breathing that deep breath. Come back through, take that on the other side, that bend. Inhale, look towards the hands, find a spinal wave, roll however you can, find your way to plank, hold for one breath, lower the knees, the chest, and scoop the hips down, lift the heart, cobra, inhaling. Let's lower down again. We'll stay on the hands, take them wide. So we'll have elbows up. Send the hips side to side for a moment. Toes point back. Inhale, wide, cobra, lift all the way up like a wave going out, exhale, rock forward through the spine and down. Inhale to lift, keep reaching the toes back, pelvis in the earth. Exhale down. With your breath, find the wave, inhale. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale. This time, inhale all the way up. Drop the right shoulder, look left. Inhale all the way up through center. Exhale, other side, left shoulder drops, gaze over right. Toes point back. Inhales for centering. Exhale, drop in. 
Ooh. Take a few more on your own. Dropping the shoulder, looking over the other shoulder. Toes pointing back. Coming back through center, forearms to the earth. Press the palms into the earth. Track the elbows back towards your body. Pelvis still engaging the earth. Toes still back strongly. Inhaling to pull our hearts through the window of our arms for Sphinx pose. Stay here, keep that tension in the forearms, pushing down and tracking towards the body for this chest and heart opener. Breathing life into this heart space that may have been disturbed by anxiety, panic. realization of how delicate our bodies are and this opportunity to be in life is reaching the heart forward exhale slide the hands to the side of the ribs inhale to lift cobra or upward facing dog exhale step back into your downward facing dog you can see i've got my socks on i'm staying warm at home it's pretty cold in my house today, we're creating that warm fire within, just this steady sort of pace, keep reaching the hips high, stretching the inner thighs back in the heels down towards the earth. Look from elbow pit to elbow pit, just shaking the head no in some way, side to side. Look to the hands, exhale or hop forward fold. We're just gonna take a long forward fold. Maybe the knees are heavily bent so the chest can hug the thighs or you're pulsing the legs straight by dropping the heels deeper into the earth. Pressing the legs back. Breathing in, lift halfway, lengthen through the crown of the head. And exhale, fold again. Remember, your knees can be bent. Maybe you go back and forth, find a little pulsing action in the legs. <sighs> Inhale to lift halfway, lengthen. Exhale, find that fold again. We're gonna hold here, so don't lock out the knees. Some, some sort of softness in the knees. Grab both elbows, rock side to side. Our forward folds are going to be really great for calming the nervous system. Relieving some upper back and neck tension, release the tension in the head. Maybe even use your hands as counterweight to kind of hold the head and let this gentle weight pull you down, bend into the knees. Inhale, drop the hands, lift halfway. Exhale to our down facing dog. Inhale, send the right foot back, point the toe, get a nice stretch in the transition. Exhale, just a slow step forward. Foot to the outside of both hands, so hands are on the inside. We'll sink in for this lizard experience, lizard pose. Rock back and forth on that back toe for a moment, getting into the foot. And if you need to be down with that back knee, lower down on exhale. We're just hanging out here for a moment and a lizard on hands. You can breathe and stay in this place or somewhere in between or walk your foot out to the side more. Take the long edge of your foot and open the knee out to the side so it looks like this. You can go even deeper by taking the forearms. Breathing wherever you are. Not comparing ourselves anymore. I think that's one thing we're realizing is really obsolete during these times is that there's no real discrimination in our value and in our worth and what our bodies look like or are acting like today. Maybe walk the hands even more further away from the foot to the left or on forearms. I just want you to have options. 
So we're all really made equal by these hum humbling times. These, I'm meditating on that. Inhale to walk back up, up onto the hands. Pull the knee in. Inhale from here. Exhale, send the back of the leg to the sky. Exhale, lower down. Two more of those, just stretching, pulsing the leg. Lower down. Inhale. Slowly drop the knee. Exhale, spin the right leg all the way around. Reach the left hand long, just finding a spinal balance. Tucking the belly towards the spine. Thinking about lengthening in both directions, so out from the heel, out through the fingertips without crunching up into the back. Pull everything in. And then exhale into a wide-legged child's pose. Knees wide so the hips can fall into that space. Hips drop towards the heels, bow into the forehead. Feel your head on the earth. This contact with the moment, it's happening, we're happening, and we're well. That's such a gift. On an inhale, look to your hands Exhale, let it go. Lift up and through on an inhale, finding a cobra wave. Lift the heart at the top and we'll exhale, flow back and forth a few times. So back to child's pose, use the inhale to slide through the spine into cobra wave of one type. Exhale, hips back to the heels, child's pose. There's many kinds of cobra waves in, in yoga. <laughs> these days. They're all pretty cool. Use the inhale to lift the heart through Cobra. Exhale. A few more at your own pace and time with your own breath. Find the fluidity in the spine. Exhale back. Next time, slide up. We'll join in Cobra pose. Lift the heart. Exhale. Downward facing. Maybe you're walking the dog, dropping the heels towards the earth, press into all parts of the hand, turning the biceps forward, wrapping the arms long through the head. On an inhale, lift that left leg, point the toes, send it out from the hips. Exhale, slow step it forward. Just pause here, foot on the outside of both hands. So we're on the inside again for that lizard. Knee down if you need, if you need. <laughs> Starting up high on the hands. If you're off of the knee, send energy out from that back heel pressing towards the wall or whatever is behind you. Don't forget the breath is at the center of all of this. Lower the back knee if you would like. You can take the knife edge of that left foot and maybe the forearms. These are your options or just stay where we started or somewhere in between. It's just nice to be here in our little microcosm, macrocosm thing happening on our mats, in our homes, but collectively sharing this moment on earth. Maybe walk the hands or forearms to the right and we're even further away from that left hip. Take a few more breaths here. And then please continue to breathe. <laughs> it's our goal here. Coming back through center. Kick that left foot back. Send the right foot long. Set up for your spinal balance. Pulling the belly in, the ribs in, pushing the hand into the earth. Reaching out through the heel, out through the fingertips. And exhale, child's pose or anahata asana puppy pose, where you keep your hips stacked over the knees and start to drop down, either to the forearms or all the way to the floor with your head. And if you have the mobility in your neck, you can lift the chin and rest 
the heart to the earth on the chin gazing forward. Somewhere where you can expand with the breath. If you're not in Anahata Asana, you're in child's pose, pressing the hips towards the heels. Somewhere in between, maybe you found a new nook, a place to be in the body, in the mind. Inhale, start to come up, round through the spine, push the floor away for our cat. Inhale, round the spine the other way, hips to the sky, heart forward, lift to cow. Exhale, press to cat, look towards the navel. Inhale, lift to cow. Finding any kind of nuance to this movement. Maybe you're doing barrel rolls. You can always do that. If you've never done yoga before and this is your first time on a mat, let's just call it movement. We're rolling the rib cage and the belly forward and down and through and around. Reverse that circle, maybe even let the gaze sort of follow. We're breaking the mold of our brain that keeps us, whether we're used to being at a desk that we're no longer at or in the car or behind the computer, we're mostly not moving fluidly. We're moving mechanically and repetitively. So this can be really liberating just to find some fluidity in our postures. All right, come back through neutral. If you have no knee issues, sit back into hero's pose. So you can simply sit here onto the feet or knees together, separate the feet and sit back between for a not so gentle, but definite shin and upper foot stretch. I find this Stretch also relieves um, a lot of tension in the heart. Um, it can be really liberating. So again, or up high, or you can even start to walk back onto forearms, or even all the way back. Really no comparing ourselves to each other or to how our bodies are acting today versus yesterday or five, 10 years ago. Everything changes in a moment as we've all been realizing to greater degrees. I think this is one of the best opportunities and unprecedented opportunities to find these subtle um, sources of fulfillment, these, uh, this, these deeper awarenesses of what it actually means to surrender, what it actually means to practice clarity and peace and kind of being the shepherd of our own mind out of these anxious, reactive states. Wherever you are in hero's pose as a short meditation, start to come all the way up, untuck your knees, pull your legs around, and we'll come into seated staff pose. So you can remove the flesh from your sits bones, push the legs into the earth, find some length on an inhale, and exhale, start to tip forward to your staff pose. Inhale, lift halfway, press the legs into the floor, keep pulling the toes back towards the face, and then exhale again deeper. Keep an activity in the back of your legs as we stretch and as I share. <laughs> yeah, press the legs into the earth. Be the orchestrator of your thoughts not judging the ones that may not be as helpful, but noticing them as they arrive and telling yourself, talking to yourself through it, telling yourself that you can um, be the shepherd of these thoughts. You can lead them out or you can lead them in. 
Um, maybe even the absence of thought might be more productive than some. But certainly, I certainly resonate with that. On an inhale, come all the way up. Seated staff pose is amazing for what is called in Kundalini Yoga, the life nerve or our sciatic in Western culture. Pull that right foot in towards the inner thigh, foot rests into the thigh. Take an inhale, hands to the side to find length. Turn the torso over more towards the left leg. And then exhale, start to reach forward and down. This time we wanna keep our hearts up so we're not rounding down as much. We're hearts up, lengthening over that leg, spilling over the leg on an exhale, drawing it deeper. You may not be this far down, you may be up here, maybe you're somewhere in between. We're not judging each other, not judging ourselves. New mindsets as we start I don't know if fresh is the right word. <laughs> As we continue to strive for fresh understandings for what's going on. Taking the left hand to the inside of the left leg somewhere. It could be here, it could be down here. Inhale, open up to the right. So it's just a gentle twist, opening the heart, opening the ribs, the side body. Keep reaching the heart towards the ceiling, even if you can't see it move. Experience it from the inside out, and maybe you wanna reach that arm up and over the ear, and maybe you grab the toe, but it's not necessary. Find a place where you can experience the stretch and draw into that place. In my classes, I always teach the opportunity to add flowing movements to the postures, so you can always use the in-breath as an opportunity to lengthen and the exhale to move in. Or finding stillness. You know, sometimes I just want to do a few poses and be very still in them. And generally, that's more grounding and stabilizing. The vinyasa and the flow is for building heat, creating momentum. Inhale all the way up. Lift and lengthen. Exhale, let it go. Roll the shoulders forward through the elbows, drawing circles. And backwards, just a little mobility love in between. Set up on the other side, right leg long, left foot to the inside of that thigh. Maybe move your sits bones away from your butt. It sounds strange, but it's more like a scoot. You just want to scoot, lift the spine. Push the leg into the earth, flex the toes towards the face, and then start to hinge forward. Remembering we're keeping the heart lifted this time, not so much moving in to that rounded spine, just for the sake of feeling the difference. Lengthening the breath, experiencing more depth in each breath. Drawing life in from where we are like a plant. <laughs> we have everything we need inside this being. Food unutilized, this life force energy that circulates that we can touch around all kinds of circumstances. And I'm so happy if you've made it this far through the video, if you're committed to this forward fold, bow in. <laughs> Something to commit ourselves to. It doesn't really matter what it is during this time, as long as it reflects back the kind of quality and values you wanna find in your life, that's worth doing. Could be yoga, could be meditating, sitting. Right hand on the inside of that leg. On an inhale, open up to the left. Maybe you're up really high. Maybe you're just halfway turned. No judging. Open the heart to the ceiling. Push the leg into the earth. Toes flex towards the face. On an exhale, maybe the hand comes over the ear. Just reaching out through that side body. Maybe it comes to the toes, not necessary, but possible. <laughs> Breathe long, deep. 
inhale, lift up and long. Exhale forward. La la la. Take the soles of the feet together. The hands will come behind the body for this gentle, I just love this gentle back bend. Pushing into the hands. Fingers can be pushing, facing towards the heels or out for rotating the shoulders out. This is already a nice stretch for the shoulders, but you can push the heart forward, lift the chin, and drop the head back as much as is possible and safe and where you can still breathe. A wonderful opener for the heart and for the throat. On an exhale, tuck towards the body, hug yourself. We can't touch each other, but we can make contact with ourselves. This is something we don't often do healthily. Hands touch the legs. Just give yourself a little pat on both sides of the legs. Pat all the way up and down the sides of the hips. A little qigong activating. Get the low back. I'm serious, get the low back. Feels so good. <laughs> Come into the front of the body, tap out the belly, the chest. Maybe now you're in some sort of seated posture. We're just gonna pause here, get down the sides of the arms, the shoulders, inside and outside of both arms. Sides of the neck, both sides. Now we're not beating ourselves up, but I just like a good bit of tension. So maybe you're tapping lightly. We all have different temperaments. <laughs> Maybe you just need some gentle, gentle taps. And we'll take two fingers of both hands, first, first two fingers to the temples, rub little circles forward at a temple. And backwards, this is just a little break before we come down. Exhale, round in again towards yourself. Give yourself a hug. Say thank you for getting me through this insane time, for being here. Maybe our thoughts have gone through so many different cycles, but our bodies have been here holding us up. And if we take care of them, they will continue to. So let's take a few rock and rolls along the spine, if you can, all the way up and down the spine. Make a little cannonball. If you have a partner or your roommates or you're with family, um, make them laugh. Roll around a little bit. Maybe you have a cat messing with your face or something. Even better, I'd love to see that. And come all the way down, hugging the knees into the chest. Just let this be a nice stretch. Rocking side to side now. This pose is classic for many, many reasons. You can probably feel it stretching your low back, but it also helps aid the um, tasks of the internal organs. Take the arms out wide into a T, send the legs straight up for a moment. Point and flex the toes, send the heels up and down. So we're just lifting and lowering the feet, pushing the heels up, alternating, pushing the toes up. With the hands into a T, bend the knees again, exhale the knees to the left. Inhale the heart more towards the ceiling so the knees may come up a little bit so that you can keep pushing that right shoulder down into the earth. We want more twist in the abdomen and hopefully eventually reaches the outside of your hips. If you want more out of this stretch, you can straighten that top leg and reach for the big toe. You can even straighten that bottom leg if you want extra. Be where you need to be. Great twist for the hips. Also doing stuff for the belly and the internal organs because we are in that twist. Breathing in. Maybe your gaze, whether the eyes are closed or open, are facing, facing your right side. Be here in this pose. Experience it at whatever level or degree, stage you are in. 
using this posture as a kind of instrument for your experience with the breath is one of those tools that you're learn using to record this experience. Just breathing in, trying to lengthen the inhale and the exhale. Release the foot if you have it, or simply return back to center. Pause for a moment. Reset the hips by dropping the feet, tucking the tailbone, lowering it down and rounding it. Tuck, roll. So these pelvic tucks, just resetting the low back, also working a little lumbar mobility in. Exhale, hug your knees into the chest again. Open arms into a T and exhale. Legs go to the right now or whatever side you did not do. Taking whichever variation is working for you today. Maybe that top leg straightens into yogi toe lock where you're holding the big toe of the left foot in the right forefinger and thumb. Maybe you can twist your gaze more to the left, breathing into the space, any spaces you find, resisting, maybe into new spaces you've never experienced, new feelings, old feelings, they all live here in the body. So sometimes I feel like I'm on a hike through my body when I'm doing yoga, just like we're experiencing life and the sensations that our body measures from a different vantage point or from a different quality of mind, especially if the breath is really being cultivated. Inhale, exhale to come back to center. Lay on your back and rest in Savasana.